more and more young people are getting their news from social media. <gasps> Shock, horror, it's the death knell of civilization as we know it. Or is it? It may well be a boon for our teaching. At least that's what I'm hoping to convince you of today. We're going to be looking at Instagram and how to use images and texts from Instagram for jigsaw reading tasks. Now, why Instagram? We all know that Instagram is a great source of images. Um, and um, many people are maybe not aware that more and more organizations, including reputable news outlets, are on Instagram. And especially these uh, um, traditional outlets um, have professional photographers and have ex extraordinary, high-quality, evocative images and um, very good texts as well. We think of Instagram as primarily visual, but it's not only visual. Uh, the texts which accompany the images are in some cases getting longer and longer and we'll see today are basically short articles or essays, you could say. It's almost an emerging genre of its own. Um, and what's fantastic is that because these texts are short, they're easily adaptable um, for teaching purposes and gradable and um, lend themselves well to uh, jigsaw readings, for instance. So um, we're going to be looking at combining jigsaw um, tasks in an online environment. Obviously, this can be adapted to face-to-face -to -face teaching um, using QR codes um, since we don't have pieces of paper to hand out for our learners, the, the mobile phone will serve that purpose. So the idea here is to set this task up with two devices. So the learner has their uh, desktop or, la uh, or laptop as a primary uh, device and then uh, a QR code to take a look at their uh, um, reading, um, their, their specific reading, their text. Now, We'll be looking at some examples from some obvious, uh, uh, well-known accounts. I'm sure there are um, less mainstream ones that are perhaps even better. Uh, I've chosen ones such as uh, National Geographic, uh, The New York Times and The Economist, partly because of the types of students I'm teaching, uh, university students at a C1 level, mostly. Um, so what's a jigsaw reading? Uh, basically, it's a communicative activity in which each member of a group has a different text, which they retell to each other in their own words. The idea is that there's some sort of information gap. Uh, and the idea is that together, this information leads to the completion of a task as a group or as in pairs. Now, um, in terms of selection criteria, what sorts of texts should you pick? Well, obviously, ones that are going to appeal to your learners and are appropriate for their age, for their... Uh, current language ability, um, so, um, and also you want to make sure that the texts are of similar length. Um, again, now the question of should it, they all be on the same topic? Um, today I've prepared an activity uh, related to running, um, and uh, one's more humorous, uh, it goes with a, a naked race, uh, uh, and then the other one is quite serious, it's about someone losing a limb uh, as a result of an ultra marathon accident. Um, but to be honest, I don't actually think jigsaw readings need to be based around a topic and I think as teachers we sometimes uh, get too hung up on there being a, a topic in class. So I've fallen into that trap today but I don't, don't f feel free to try doing this with just texts or images that you find appealing. Um, the more disparate the better I would say. Um, now, moving on, uh, let's take a look at how to go about uh, creating this jigsaw reading. So obviously the first step is choosing the Instagram post that you want to use. So here we see a screenshot of uh, the post that I've chosen, or one of the two posts that I've chosen. And so we're going to look at two different ways of uh, using the post. The first, it's sharing the link to the post itself, uh, the URL of the post and the second option we'll see is if we uh, copy and paste the image and text into a Google Doc and we'll compare the relative advantages of both. So here the first option this would be maybe the if you're in a, a big rush and you want to do something quickly so simply copy the URL so you see at the top of the page we've got the this is on the desktop obviously um, of in, version of Instagram you copy the URL and uh, then we're going to look at how to use that URL and share it with our learners. The second option is, I say time permitting, because I do think the second option 
uh, present some uh, major advantages. Um, here we see a screenshot of a Google Doc in which I've, uh, instead of copying the URL, what I've done is I've created a table with two columns. This is important. You just create a table, two columns, uh, just two cells. And on the left-hand side, you've got the image. I would say make sure to, that the, the, the photo credit is in there. And uh, on the right-hand side, you've got the text, okay? Um, I would say if, you, if we go back and we look at the difference, um, we can tell that it's just a lot easier to read the text and we know that noticeability is vital so I would say time permitting the second option is preferable. Now now in terms of sharing these um, this content with your learners so you paste the Instagram or Google Doc URL now if you're not familiar with Google Docs uh, you can simply Google this um, you go up to file and then share and then you've got the uh, option to get a shareable link, make sure it's a public link, um, and then you go to a QR generator such as the one you see here, qrcodegenerator.com, and then you place the URL there, and then on the right hand side you get, voila, you get a, you, uh, you, uh, sorry, a QR code. Now, one shortcut for you uh, for uh, all of this I would say is if you're not familiar with screenshots Google how to make a screenshot I was going to include the links but because there are different ways of doing it depending on whether you've got a PC or Mac this is a huge time saver for example if you're using QR codes it's a bit of a hassle if you've got a download you see on the right hand side it says download JPG JPEG that will take an extra few seconds if you're doing this more than once uh, find out how to do a, a screenshot because then once the QR code is generated, you don't need to download it, you can simply copy it uh, by highlighting, uh, highlighting that area of the screen. So a very important micro skill for online teaching. So if you don't know how to do it, take five minutes and find out how. It'll save you tons of time. Now, jigsaw reading with two texts. So here we've got the two texts, A and B. Um, this is how they would be seen uh, if they were on a desktop uh, with the URLs. Um, and uh, as you can see, you'll need to scroll down to see the full text. Um, whereas if we share, share these posts in a Google Doc, um, it's more legible. It's, it's easier to read the whole text. Um, now, Let's take the example, if you've got a group of 10 students and you're working with two texts, as, we're, as I'm doing with you today, then you'll split the group into five pairs for work in breakout rooms. Um, from your main Google Doc, link to five sub docs labeled one through five. Now, paste the QR codes for each post in a table in your group's shared group Google sub doc, clearly label the posts. Now, so, for example, you've got uh, we've created a QR code for text A and a QR code for text B. The students from their shared Google Doc uh, will scan one or the other and read it individually. Uh, so the procedure, give pairs a set amount of time to read their texts individually on their mobile, have them discuss their texts, link to a sub document containing both texts without the images and a collaborative task. For example, requiring students to identify specific lexical chunks or grammatical structures. And you may want to include discussion prompts. Now, again, if you're in a hurry, the um, task, the collaborative task, could simply be them telling each other about the text. This is a sort of truncated, simplified version, and some people might say that's not a true jigsaw task. Uh, but uh, we all know uh, that we aren't uh, always, we don't always have a lot of time. So I would say that's another option if you're, if you're pressed for time. Now, so here's the example. Um, I've got another uh, post on my um, blog about using Google Docs and sub docs, linking them. It sounds more difficult than it is and it's hugely beneficial. It's made online teaching a lot easier for me. It's very easy to structure um, going back and forth between open class discussions and then breakout rooms. So uh, I've included the link at the end of the presentation. You can find that on my website. So here you've got on the main class uh, document that the students we routinely use for notes, things that we want to just be able to see together, sort of like the, the blackboard, the whiteboard. However many groups you normally work with, you, 
you just create those links once and then these are like basically individual whiteboards for each subgroup that you you can reuse so just have to create just have to create them once so um, you click on that group one you create a link to it and um, this is what you paste this is what you would see when let's say if I'm put into group, uh, breakout room one then I would click on group one uh, and so would my partner and then this is what we would see and this content you can simply paste into each of the sub docs so they're asked to read their text and then tell each other uh, about it in their own words and then there's a link to the follow-up task okay part two um, is the sort of the specific collaborative task okay so this is what they would see once they finish discussing the texts together uh, the second round is once they click on this link below number two this is what they would say so I've done away with the images because now we're focusing on the text so it's also easier for them to read the text uh, side by side okay and then if they scroll down this is what they see so there's some vocabulary work uh, identifying specific words and they don't know which uh, of the two texts the vocabulary items are from um, then some practice and recontextualization and then finally some discussion questions prompts and um, yes and now typographical enhancements to encourage noticing uh, let's say uh, we wanted to make this a little easier for them since uh, so we could we could highlight uh, the, the vocabulary here that we're looking for at the beginning um, we could choose to highlight it uh, to so that it doesn't it's not too time consuming for them um, give them some help and um, if we wanted to make the task focused more on uh, speaking rather than um, vocabulary we could actually do away with the first part and put the paraphrases or the synonyms for these words in uh, brackets after the word inside the text Okay, so just create, give them some extra uh, support in the text and get them to move on directly, for instance, to uh, the discussion uh, if we want to focus on uh, simply reading and speaking. Uh, so here are some of the um, accounts I mentioned before, The Economist. Um, here are just some uh, a sample of the images and stories that you can find on uh, Instagram. Um, as you can see, there are quite a number of graphs. So for example, if you're teaching IELTS academic, this is great for the writing task on interpreting a graph. Um, and I think it's interesting for uh, advanced learners, depending if they're social science students or economists um, studying economics. Now, National Geographic, National Geographic Travel is another good one. And here are some links. So we've got a link to the subdoc. Uh, so you can click on those if you wanted to actually do the specific uh, task um, the specific um, to uh, this, um, this specific task you've got the link there and uh, here's the link the shortened link to my uh, blog post on how to work with Google Docs and break breakout rooms you can also find that on my website thanks for watching